had just enough life. Yeah. To start climbing back in the, in the wall. The wall was huge. Yeah, life yeah, was they, never really relevant that game. It was more. He, he, was, he was getting down there toward, towards the end. He was still. He was. Getting, he was never even in single digits. It seemed scary to me. I was getting nervous. A Johnny him. Vengeance seemed scary to me yes. with seven tokens on him. The seven counters on a Johnny Vengeance. I mean, Gabe, and he he only had the cryptic drew the cryptic command with like one or two turns to spare. Right. So the one-sided Armageddon is very very <laughs> difficult to climb out of. Evens the set up at two, one apiece. Yeah. So what do you think of the matchup now that you've watched it a couple times? I think it favors Nassif, but I, I, I don't think it's as bad a matchup as Yamamoto had it as. I agree on both counts. I, I think that the uh, I think the Ajani Vengeance are just place an incredible amount of pressure on mm -hmm. Nassif to draw his cards in the right order. Right. I agree with you. Should Yamamoto mulligan to Wajani? <laughs> so they, uh, looks like uh, Yamamoto is in need of a restroom break. He's uh, probably a little... Uh, he's brought in Bane Fires, uh, along with the Burlington Forge Tenders. Oh, interesting. For his sideboard plan. Yeah. So we could see another Conflux card come into play. Sure. Let's see if we can figure out when you see side border. Sounds like he's yeah, taking out his. Kind of have to go my. No, not pretty though. They go vomit <laughs> between games. They're pretty disgusting. <laughs> Let's see if uh, making Maybe himself I make them sick. Maybe I'm nervous. Our stomach gets all upset. Oh, I think he's talking about making Yamamoto sick. <laughs> Love the arena shot. I like this yeah. overhead. The Planeswalker symbol in the middle there. This is where all the feature matches took place over the course of the weekend. Right, 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 right. Wow. Seven minutes left in the round. <laughs> huh. Hello again. Hey. Randy Bueller, Ryan David Marshall. We got the uh, mid semi final stretch break restroom thing. Are you going to sing anything for us? I am not going to sing. I might sing later tonight at karaoke. Oh. Among a circle of friends and trusted comrades, but not in public. I would not That's the subject nice thing about Japanese that. karaoke. I mean, they definitely do karaoke better than uh, the right. stateside. You're not right. out in the middle. It's just, you know, it's the little sequestered rooms. If you haven't, haven't been to Japan, the karaoke setup is, you know, giant building with a bunch of little rooms. So it's just you and your friends. You have a little button you can push to have them bring beer and sake. It's nice. It's very it's nice. nice. I, I believe some tunes will be sung this evening after the staff dinner. You're going to do your classic? <laughs> I don't know. My rule is I only do karaoke in Japan. That's my rule. And uh, I, feel free to guess what you think Randy's <laughs> trademark <laughs> karaoke song. song is. I don't think you will guess successfully. We'll reveal it in Honolulu. <laughs> oh, the story's probably <laughs> been told often enough. I don't know. I can't actually sing, but I can yeah, I can you, do enthusiastic. Yeah. You 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 do you do very well. I can't actually sing. It's true. <laughs> there are very few crowds where I am the better of two singers. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I'm a little worse than Greg Collins. It's true. <laughs> I just got a really in my ear from Rich Hang on like, <laughs> Obviously having heard Greg Collins sing yeah. and he can't imagine it. Well Rich actually can sing. Yeah. Rich Rich has quite a good voice. Yeah. Which he, he regaled people with in Malaysia. Do we know? Do we, do we know what we have queued up for staff dinner? For food? You know, I don't know. I I've, I've, all I've heard is uh, uh, just as long as it's not McDonald's <laughs> or TJ Fridays. That was my first. My first. I, I love Mark Rosewater. He, he's sure, but 
I do not want to eat with him. No, he is a very picky man. My first he knows what he likes. My first he... trip ever to Japan mm -hmm. was Pro Tour Yokohama. Okay. Yeah, my first match, I actually got to cover Nassif. It was the first time I ever watched Nassif play. Okay. Uh, he was playing Enchantress, I think, against Tommy Wallamies. And, you know, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm excited to get sushi. I'm excited to get, you know, tapanyaki. I'm excited to get Kobe beef, anything. I'm just TGI Fridays. Mark Rosewater was in charge of the, the staff meals yeah. at that point. TGI Fridays. That was my first Japanese food experience. <laughs> There is a pizza place by the office that knows Mark by name. It's the same thing. If you thing. ever want to spy really on the much. secrets of Wizards of the Coast. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Roundtable Pizza. That is the place you want to hang out. You'll hear all, like, the MTG Salvation guys definitely want to set up a station at Roundtable <laughs> Pizza. It's totally true. We got defeated by dinner last night. Oh, it was we were crushed. awful. It was 2-0 it was and then like a game loss <laughs> for the next round. Or some some bizarre effect where we're obliged to play Kithkin in the next PTQ against our will or something. <laughs> so we're supposed to go to this crab place. Kyoto is actually known for its its crab. It's the specialty, and there's a crab house literally around the corner from the arena. So we go, we get a little bit lost, get turned around looking for the kanji character, trying to figure out what's the kanji character for crab, only to eventually stumble across it and see giant statue of crab. Okay, it wasn't the kanji character we were looking for, but that's fine. We found it. We go in. Oh. They're closed. At 9.30. 9.30 on a Saturday, they're closed. I have a complaint about food in Japan now. <laughs> Annoying. Ah, looks like uh, the players are ready to go back, so we'll have to finish this story later. Let's go watch game three. Two lands apiece. Nassif has uh, got his vivid lands going. He's got his dice rolling. Okay. Figure of destiny. So that, the quick rest of the story. Crab plays two pizzas at 9.30. We go inside. Okay, fine. We'll cab it back to the hotel. There's a train station across the street from the hotel full of all kinds of restaurants. We go there only to discover everything at the train station closes at 10, which is about when we got there. Almost everything. Closed. Almost everything. There was convenience store, yep. open until 11, and McDonald's. Yes. The sound of singing you hear is a happy Rich Hagon eating yeah. at McDonald's. The only person who has a more limited palate than Mark Rosewater. That's probably true. <laughs> Figure Destiny gets in for two damage. So yes, we were uh, McDonald's, not the Japanese food yes. that uh, we imagined eating for dinner. Here comes a big figure. Yep. Or me the medium figure. Turn. Medium size. Yeah. Two cards from Esther Charm for Gabrielle and the Seaf. We did get the draft though. The draft got started faster because yes. of the McDonald's was not the, the longest meal. So some pressure on these players to play a little bit faster now than uh, taking a leisurely pace here. Oh, terror's the thing. Sure. Old school. It's not old school. It's like a Mirrodin copy of the card. Okay. How is Mirrodin old school? I think LSV has betas. <laughs> LSV has some fine looking cards in his decks if you pay attention. He's usually, like, his basic lands are betas and stuff like that. And somehow, Nassif has gotten the game to a, got to a point where he has untapped mana on his opponent's turn. Yeah. Please, sir. First I have a Ranger of Eos. Nassif looks at his hand. Does have a Broken Ambitions. Also has a Wrath of God. Also has Celestial Purge. Then he wants to Clash. Keep. Esper Charm, I think. That's a Keeper, right? What did uh, Yamamoto show? Figure. Gets milled away. Johnny and a couple land also go away. Four. Four. Esper Charm's just been terrific for uh, Gabriel this match. It's true. Good solid card. I mean, all three options are relevant. Go. Oh. There's, there's not a lot of instant speed discard, too. <laughs> that was the key to last game. So now we're playing best two out of three. And the Seaf is in pretty good shape here in game three. All right, here we sit, may turn six, there's no permanents in play. Please, sir, may I have a Revel Arc? I think that answer might actually be yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cards. Sweet. 
Gabe kept Esper Charm off his Broken Ambition, so presumably he's going to draw a couple cards here. Draw two. Yeah, the how many cards? Three. He's about to have seven mana. Is this cool ultimatum time? Untapped land. Yes. And there it is. Straight to seven, straight to cruel ultimatum. Yamamoto loses his entire hand. Something's coming back. He's going to have to sack Revelark. We already know there's a figure there because okay, he got uh, milled off the broken ambitions. Alright. Oh, did Nassif mess up? The, forgot to filter the land first. Now he's obliged to use a counter. No, I don't know. Cool ultimatum. Discards. Elspeth. Elspeth. Special procession and a two-power creature. Uh, I guess Gabe has to make his decision first. What's the third card? Another. Oh, two Elspeths. Yeah. So, so Rebel Ark is going to get only the one figure. No, two oh, figures. two figures. We milled a figure as well. Right. Uh, that seems fine. The seat goes up to 21 and refills his hand. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, there's a Wrath over there to deal with the two figures. It's a broken ambition, but he's all tapped out. There's a Celestial Purge. And a bunch of land. Not the sauciest hand I've ever seen at this point in the game. Especially since he's discarding two. Like, that's a nine-card hand. It's only got, I think, three spells in it. But they're fine. Yeah. <laughs> They'll do just fine. Didn't even get a creature back. No, didn't was, didn't have any creatures. No mold drifters this game. But whatever. His opponent, no cards in hand, a couple of figures. It's a little bit play. of a bold play. Seems well, he's got the, he knows he has he's the Wrath in his hand. He knows he has the Wrath in his right. hand. Right. I was just thinking if he discards a Siege Gang or if he... Yeah, the Wrath is... If it wasn't for the Wrath, it would be a little scary. But in fact, he basically knows next turn he'll wrath. Now basically, he's played the game such that Yamamoto has one card off the top of his deck. Right. And Gabe has a grip full. Wrath God. Nice looking. That, now that's old school. That's a nice Quentin Hoover black border yes. version. Yeah. I think it might be like French revised though. I don't think it's yep. beta. It might say buried. It might. Oh. In French, though. Yeah. Gabriel probably got that card when he was 12. So, yeah, we determined at, at lunch that his first Pro Tour, he was just 16 or... 16. Is there one card? Yeah. Apparently the French is there in turn. <laughs> it okay. is, in fact, French... Revised Wrath of God. Okay. And I'm your turn. Draw two. Okay. More cards. More lands. Might, reminds me of uh, John Finkel's comment when he saw Traumatic Visions for the first time. Yeah. He said, those are the only two things I ever want to do. <laughs> Play lands and counter spells. Yeah. Yeah, Muldrifter's quite good here. Two cards and a 2-2 two -two flying blocker. He's got four lands left. He's counting how many lands are left in his deck. He has drawn a lot of them. This card. This card's another one. I think we're one game away from a from the showdown. From the showdown. From our from our two picks. The best player in the game right now versus the most decorated player in the in the building. Any vengeance stick? Mm, probably not. <laughs> Can I go? Oops. <laughs> Johnny, please, sir, may I have a Johnny vengeance? 
Does Gabe still only have the one counter in his hand? It's always a little nerve-wracking to... Yeah, he uses it. Plume Veil versus a Ranger of Eos. Shit, Plume Veil, right? That's not that's relevant. The first, I think that's the first clash I've seen him lose. No, he does have another Broken Ambition, so... Not too much heartburn about countering a Johnny there. Off the Ultra Shirt attacking. Off for the one-third for two-third trade. Yeah, but the fact that he does not blocking means I think we're going to see a dragon here. I guess it could just be another Maltrister, too. I'm thinking Dragon. Dragon. Checking to see how much money he's going to have left when he's done. There it is. Yep. Broodmate Dragon. Pair of 4-4 four, four Flyers. Agonizing. The man is a little tricky in this deck. There is the pair of 4-4 four, four Flyers. A couple of his Miser's cards in his hand. The Miser's Purge, the Miser's Pithing Needle. Yes. Broken Ambitions in two land. Yamamoto taps Miss. four four Ranger of Eos. Does Nassif care? If he counters it, he risks getting his dragon path, but he's still got the other half of the broodmate dragon. Aaron Forsyth's vision of creatures as the two for ones paying off here for Nassif. Removal spell, only gonna get half his half his monster. Here's there's, a cre there's one creature that gives you two, one creature Departs. that gives you three, another creature. It's uh, every every creature in play actually is card advantage. Yeah. Every single one of them. I mean, the Ranger V has just sets you down a whole path of card advantage, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go get my Harbinger, get my Revelar. <laughs> I think I counter this. I don't want to start playing Harbinger for Rebel Art games. Or, or even just What's the worst thing that happens? He pads away your dragon, right? Yeah. Or resolves some big thing next turn. But, I mean... Yep. The Cease got race in play. Even when he, even if he loses one of his 4-4s, four he's still got 6 power against their opponent at 13. Yeah, I totally think you use your last counter there. Land versus land. Now, Windbrisk Kite 3, I don't know what you might want. <laughs> Both players push. Did Yamamoto push the heights? And yes, there's the path. No land for a Nassif. No. Let's crown them all. Yep, attack with both. Yamamoto takes the six. Yep. Nassif plays a vivid land and shifts oh. the turn. No, no, he kept the Yamamoto kept, kept the heights. What will it reveal? Lots of goodies. Spectral Procession, Siege King, Figure, and a land. Siege King goes underneath, yeah. of course. Now, attack, right? Well, can't do it this turn. Oh, and oh. another Siege King. And another Siege King. Hmm. Wow. Wow. 
wow, those are some platinum hits from Yamamoto. I think, well, I mean, last we saw, Gabe was out of permission in his hand. I mean, he drew, he was all the Cruel Ultimatum. He's drawn a ton of cards off the Cruel Ultimatum, the Esper Charm, the Mold Drifter, but a lot of them have been land. He's discarded something like four lands over yeah. the course of this game. He can needle the Siege Gang. Oh, that helps. That's a good He point. can also purge it. Fifteen life. He wants to needle the Windbrisk Heights. That's what he wants to needle. Right? Right. So he can purge Siege Gang, needle the Heights, and he's basically just playing against six race. one ones, and I think he wins that race. Yeah. He goes to twelve. He attacks Yamamoto down to one. He comes to six. Yeah, I think. And yeah. Yamamoto's out of cards, so yeah, and Yamamoto can't crack back at that point. Right. Nasif is. I don't think he has the permission, but the needle and the purge should be good enough to win the race, barring a really a good top deck from Yamamoto. Okay. Head, Head judge. judge, yeah, Ricardo mm -hmm. Tessitore, he's lingering. This game is definitely being played at a fairly slow pace. And mm -hmm. wants to make sure the players make their actions a reasonable amount of time. Oh, I just caught a flash of Gabe's hand. Turns out his draw phase last turn gave him... A broken ambitions. I don't think you use it here, right? No, I, th I think you can just uh, you purge you purge siege gang. Purge siege gang. You needle the heights and you win the race. And you Ooh, still have and you still have the right, broken ambitions for anything. Right, you anything counter all the top decks. Fifteen seven. I think that's the conclusion that this team is coming to. Yeah. Of course, every time we've said that, he's done something opposite. Yeah, he's also, I mean, having the head judge lingering and bugging you makes it 